Welcome to the medical nursing unit, medical disorders of urinary system. We want to see urological pathologies. One, urinary tract infections, what we call UTIs. UTI is defined as inflammation of the urinary epithelium in response to colonization with the hepatogen. Causes bacteria are the most common cause of UTI. We can say, example, a Sericia coli, Neisseria gonorrhea, Chlamydia, Trachomotis, Klebsiella, Proteus, Staphylococcus, Mycoplasma, and Pseudomonas. The fungi also, Candida albicans, can cause urinary tract infections and the viruses and also parasites. We can say, Trichomonas vaginalis. This is the parasite that can cause urinary tract infection. What are the risk factors for urinary tract infection? Premature infants. Yeah, premature infants are exposed and sexually active women. So when you say sexual active women, those women with the multiple partners, those who share sex. Women using a diaphragm and the spermicid. Individuals with diabetes mellitus. Individuals with advanced HIV or immunosuppressive disorders. People with recent instrumentation of urinary system or indwelling catheterization. You can see the catheter. Mm, the catheter, urinary catheter also. Uh, this is the factor that can cause urinary tract infections. We have to minimize the time of in of catheterization if possible people with obstruction of the lower urinary tract let's see urethritis urethritis the urethritis is an inflammation of urethra the symptoms you this is urethra tingling or itching and the itching and the burning sensation Frequency and the urgency with the urination. The urgency is to go to urinate frequently. Yeah. And when you you and you, you when you you dry a bit, you can you the urine the urine can come immediately. This is urgency. Prevent or clear mucus like a discharge from urethra. Diagnosis: We can do urinary disease. What is the treatment? Antibiotic therapy, either doxycycline or erythromycin. Methodazole also in the case of trichomonas infection are given in study in the case of candida infections, especially for the women. Cystitis. Cystitis is an inflammation of the bladder. The manifestation is the dysuria, urinary frequency, lower back pain, suprapubic pain, maybe crude urine and infected smelling, nausea and or vomiting. Diagnosis also, we can do urinary disease and gram stain. The treatment also is antibiotics. Example, nitrofurantoin, nitrofurantoin, ciprofloxacin, and you can give analgesics in one to three days. Uh, when cystitis, now you have to drink enough fluids, avoid the bladder irritant like caffeine and alcohol. Let's see acute pyronephritis. The pyronephritis is an infection of the, the renal, pelvis, and the interstitium, which involves one or both kidney. Uh, this is an infection of the renal, pelvis, and interstitium. Uh, this can involve one or both kidney. These factors, they are a kidney stone, a vesicoletral reflex, pregnancy, instrumentation, and sexually active women. Pathophysiology. Infection is spread by ascending microorganisms along the ureters and maybe also by bloodstream. The infection causes inflammation and the inflammatory process affect the pelvis, medulla and tubules. There is medullary infiltration of white blood cells with renal inflammation, renal edema and pyrant urine. 
in a severe infection, the abscess may be formed in the medulla and extend into the cortex. The necrosis of renal papilla may develop. The infection most of the time spread by ascending microorganisms. When we say ascending, it means uh, the bacteria can initially ascend from uh, urinary orifices and ascend to the urethra, um, bladder, and the ureters, and then they can affect the the the, the, the kidney. For those uh, who have the catheterization, unique catheterization, they are at risk to develop the acute nephritis. Clinical manifestations: acute onset, fever, chills, frank or going pain, frequency urine, dysuria, cost of a table tenderness, crudy or pirulent urine. Diagnosis, urinalysis, aspect, presence of white blood cells, culture, in a complicated case, blood culture, unit tract imaging, treatment, antibiotics for two to three weeks, follow up urinalysis at one week and four weeks after treatment. Resistance may occur in a case of urinary tract obstruction or Reflex. Chronic pyelonephritis. This is a persistent or recurrent infection of the kidney, leading to scarring of the kidney. One or both kidneys may be involved. Risk factors. Recurrent infections from acute pyelonephritis. Patients with renal infections associated with the obstruction, maybe renal stones. Pathophysiology of chronic pyelonephritis. There is a process of progressive inflammation, altered renal pelvis and the calyces, destruction of the tubules, atrophy or dilation and diffuse scarring, and finally impair the urine concentrating ability, leading to chronic renal failure. What are the manifestations of chronic pyonephritis? We have hypertension, frequency urine, dysuria, frank pain, progression leading to renal failure. How to diagnose it? We can do urinalysis, Pyrography, urethra sound, and the treatment we treat the cause. Obstruction must be relieved and prolonged antibiotics for four to six weeks. Other pathology is prostatitis. The term prostatitis has been used for various inflammatory conditions affecting the prostate including acute and chronic infections with specific bacteria and more common instance in which signs and symptoms of prostatic inflammation are present but no specific organisms can be detected. Classification of prostatitis. We have prostatitis acute bacterial prostatitis, chronic bacterial prostatitis, no bacterial prostatitis. Acute bacterial prostatitis. This disease generally affects men between age 30 to 50 years. The infection stimulates an inflammatory response in which the prostate becomes enlarged, tender, firm, and bulgy. Acute inflammatory prostatic edema may cause urinary obstruction with the dysuria. 
the onset of the illness may be acute or through catheterization or cystoscopy. The causes of prostatitis may be Escherichia coli, Anthrobagita, Krebsiella pseudomonas, and Chlamydia trachomatis. Those bacteria can cause prostatitis. Keep in mind that the prostatitis, this is inflammation of the prostate. Manife manifestation of prostatitis. We have low, low, low back pain, perineal pain, high fever up to 40 degrees Celsius, chills, dysuria, inability to empty the bladder, nocturia, urinary retention, systemic signs and symptoms of infection. We have myalgia, hyperalgia, fatigue, and malaise. Prostatic pain, especially when an individual is in upright position. How we diagnose this? We do urinalysis, gram stain, culture, and bacteria. What are the treatment for prostatitis? We can give antibiotics. In a severe case, we can give an IV ampicillin plus gentamicin for seven days. Then four to six weeks oral antibiotics. In the medical case, oral antibiotics up to six weeks. Analgesics, we can give analgesics for pain and antipyretics for fever. Bed rest and how to encourage the people to take adequate water for adequate hydration. Complications, we have abscess formation, epididymolkitis, seminal vesicalitis, septicemia, septic shock, residual chronic bacteria prostatitis also. Chronic bacterial prostatitis. The chronic bacterial prostatitis is characterized by recurrent urinary tract symptoms and the persistence of pathologic bacteria, usually gram negative, in the urine or prostatic fluid. Manifestations. Symptoms may be similar to those of an acute bladder infection. Urgence, frequency, dysuria, pineal discomfort, low pain, low back pain, myalgia, arthralgia, and sexual dysfunction. The prostate may only slightly enlarge it or wait, but yet fibrosis because with repeated infections can cause it to be rigid and irregular in shape. Diagnosis, urinalysis, culture, bacteriuria, gram stain, prostatic massage to express secretions, culture and gram stain. Pelvic X-ray may show prostatic calculi. Treatment, treat the underlying cause. Example, surgical removal of prostatic stone through transrectal prostatectomy plus antibiotics for 12 weeks. No steroid anti-inflammatory drugs can be given. Glomerular disease. Acute glomerular nephritis. The symptoms develop about 7 to 10 days after the streptococcal infection of the throat or skin. The antigen attacks neutrophils and macrophages, initiating phagocytosis and the release of inflammatory mediators that damage epithelial and endothelial cells lying on the basement membrane. The injury increases the glomerular capillaries permeability and lead to heavy hematuria and low proteinuria. Because there is an inflammation, The glomerular capillaries increase the permeability. That will lead to hematuria. The, the blood will escape. And the proteinuria also. We can detect the proteinuria and the blood. Proteins and, and in the urine. And the blood in the urine. Manifestations. Sudden onset hematuria. Proteinuria. Edema starts with the, pra, the pa orbital edema. In the morning, edema of the ankle, feet, and occasionally a sight 
or pelo effusion. Urine output is decreased with the higher color urine resembling black tea or Coca-Cola due to rises of the red blood cells. Hypertension may be present and may cause headache, blood vision. The fever may or not be present, chills, weakness, pallor, nausea, vomiting, anorexia, and flat pain. A what an investigation is can a urine examination for hematuria, albuminuria, white blood cells, and epithelial cells. Blood examination for urea, nitrogen, and creatinine, serum albumin, antistrebutorizin, otita, acylo can be taken. Uh, management. The treatment is symptomatic, is symptom specific. Now, antibiotics such as long acting penicillin may be given to treat infection. Antihypertensive drug may be prescribed to control to the hypertension. Magnesium sulfate may be prescribed in the antiferropathy to reduce cerebral edema. Sedatives may be required in the restless patients. Rest may be required for two to four weeks. The vital signs should be observed to detect early signs of complication. Observations of the intake and output is important. Salty food items should be avoided. Salty restricted regular food may be allowed. Fluid should be supplied according to the prescription. Chronic glomerulonephritis. The immune mechanisms commonly contribute to glomerular injury. The disposition of circulating antigen antibody complex and the formation of antibodies specific for antiglomerular basement membrane. What are the symptoms of chronic glomerulonephritis? Hematuria, proteinuria, ICD C2, 5 gram per deciliter. The characteristics of hematuria include a crude, blown, colored urine, red blood cells cast, and an accompanying proteinuria. Fluid retention and edema, hypertension, oliguria, accompany the decrease of glomerulonephritis. Right, filtration right. Evolution. After 10 to 20 years, renal insuffic insufficiency begins to develop, followed by nephrotic syndrome and an accelerated progression to end stage renal failure. Evaluation and diagnosis, urinalysis, protein aspect, renal biopsy, treatment, principal. So treatment is to treat the primary disease, preventing or minimizing immune responses and collecting accompanying problems. Antibiotic therapy can be given, steroid decrease antibody synthesis and suppress inflammatory response. Nephrotic syndrome. The nephrotic syndrome is a clinical state in which a group of symptoms can be developed in many renal disease, where there is an increase in glomerular permeability to pass plasma protein. Nephrotic syndrome is simply defined as excretion of 3.5 gram or more of protein in the urine per a day. Etiology. Nephrotic syndrome may be idiopathic. It may be secondary to diabetic, nephropathy, autoimmune disease, glomerulosclerosis, toxicity. That can be called the viral infections or drug. Pathophysiology. Loss of plasma protein, particular albumin and some immunoglobin is occurs across the injured glomerular filtration membrane. The disturbance of glomerular basement membrane leads to increased permeability to protein. The loss of albumin in the urine is followed by hypoalbuminemia, which in turn will lead to the synthesis of lipoprotein by the liver with hyperlipidemia. 
The lipid may also pass in the urine, producing lipiduria. The same as the passage of red blood cells with hematuria. The hypoalbuminemia decreases oncotic pressure and leads to sodium and water retention. Loss of immunoglobulins may increase the susceptibility to infection. Clinical manifestations of nephrotic syndrome. Many characteristics of nephrotic syndrome are heavy proteinuria, pitting edema, hypoalbuminemia, and hypercholesterolemia. Low hematuria, progressive gain in weight, edema around the eyes, puffiness of the face, which may become generalized. If a site increase, the dyspnea may arise. Vomiting, anorexia, and diarrhea may occur due to poor absorption because of the edema of the gastrointestinal mucosa. For me, urine, urine output decreases when the disease progresses to renal failure. Recurrent infections may occur. How to diagnose? We have to do the urinalysis for protein. You can see in the hospital, the doctors will request the 24 urine. Here you will collect the urine in 24 hours for urinalysis for proteins. Blood for total serum protein and albumin and the globulin levels. Electrocyte sedimentation rate, serum cholesterol, renal biopsy to identify the specific pathologic conditions. Management in the nephrotic syndrome, immunosuppressive drugs like chlorophosphamide, levamizor, are prescribed in the case of relapses. Diuretics are used to relieve edema. Diphilosemide. Antibiotics may be used to treat the infection. Bed rest is required during the stage of edema. Diet should be sodium stated, low in fat and high in proteins. The fluid intake requirement is calculated according to the output and the way. Observation of other signs of infection is necessary because these patients have low resistance. Diary urine examination for albumin is required. Nutritional needs should be met with the diet containing high protein, for example, eggs, milk, soybean, and ground nuts. The complication can be renal failure. Let's see, let us see the renal failure. A renal failure, this is a renal insufficiency to, to filtrate the urine, to filtrate the blood. The term failure indicates incapacity to fulfill the function by any organ. Classification of renal dysfunction. You have renal insufficiency, renal failure, and end stage renal failure. When you will say renal insufficiency, this is a decline in renal function to about 25 of normal glomerular filtration rate. We know very well the normal glomerular filtration rate is about 25 to 30 ml per hour. This is, is calculated per package. This is for adult. How do we calculate it? We take 0 0.5 ml times personal cage. And per hour, we have to see 25 to 30 milliliters urine. This is for adult. For a child, we we calculate by one mil, one milliliter package. For the renal insufficiency, it is a decrease in the renal function 
about 25% of this normal glomerular, glomerular filtration rate. And in, in this case, the level of serum urea and creatinine are immediately elevated. When we say renal failure, this is significant loss of renal function. But in this stage, renal failure when less than 10% of renal function remain. Is it where we will say end stage renal failure? What are the types of renal failure? We have acute renal failure and chronic renal failure. Uh, acute renal failure is an abrupt reduction in renal function with elevation of urea and the creatinine plasma level. It is an abrupt. Now, when we said an abrupt, it is a sudden. Yeah. You, de you, 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 you were normal, but abruptly you develop a reduction in renal function. A reduction in renal function will be determined by the quantity of the urine. Also, we have the increased urea and the creatinine plasma level. Currently referred to as acute kidney injury. This term is used today. We use acute kidney injury in the place of acute renal failure. Most type of acute renal failure are reversible if diagnosed and treated early. This condition is often reversible. So we have to pay attention and we have to diagnose very early and even we can prevent this. The inability of the kidney to filter waste products results in erythrocyte disturbance, metabolic disturbance and fluid imbalance. It is understandable. Yeah, because the kidney you filter the waste from the blood when the kidney is unable to filter the blood the waste will be accumulating the blood and there will be a disturbance in erythrocytes and even in metabolic in metabolic and fluid imbalance we can classify acute kidney injury into three classification we have pre-acute renal failure Entra renal or intrinsic renal failure and the post renal failure. What are the difference? The pre renal acute renal failure, the kidney usually receive 20% of to 25% of the total cardiac output. Uh, this is a, a, a this is a reduction of the blood volume to the kidney. And the kidney is normally normal, but the glomerulus rate rate is decreased due to hypoperfusion. We have the quantity of the blood reaches the kidney should be remain normal. If the blood reduced during for instance hypotension, dehydration, the nephrons now will be destroyed. So we have to keep our patient hydrated and we have to keep the blood pressure in a normal range the possible causes the first cause of the renal acute renal failure the pre-renal acute renal failure is the hypovolemia it is called pre-renal acute renal failure because the cause is not related to the kidney itself it's related to the Hypovolemia most of the time. Those are the external things, external and systemic, systemic causes. We, especially the fat, the most is hypovolemia. Increased extracellular fluid losses, hemorrhage, gastrointestinal fluid loss, vomiting, diarrhea, renal fluid loss, diuretics. When we give the drugs for diuretics, diabetes, diabetes, and control diabetes meritas. Mm. Loss of plasma volume, burns, peritonitis, hyperperfusion, septic shock, cardiac failure, massive pulmonary embolism, stenosis of renal artery, all both they cause hyperperfusion of the kidney. We have to pay attention while we are carrying the client. That is why the blood pressure it is a uh, vital sign uh, how to follow more. Uh, with attention in the hospital it is even determinant of the function of the kidney so for the case of malaria also they develop the hydration for the diarrhea 
for those the people who demonstrate the signs of reducing or reduction of the blood volume you have to pay attention and you keep maintain the blood volume in a normal range otherwise it, the acute kidney injury can occur a part of physiology the most common cause of acute renal failure is impaired renal blood flow the glomerular filtration rate decreases because of the decrease in filtration pressure the failure to restore blood volume or blood pressure or oxygen delivery may cause acute cortical necrosis or acute tubular necrosis. Let's see intralenal acute kidney injury. It is associated with parenchyma, functional part, changes uh, caused by ischemia or nef nephrotoxic substances. Uh, this is the cause in intralenal, intralenal, in the parenchyma, in the cells of the kidney. That is why it's called intra or uh, intrinsic. The causes can be acute tubular necrosis, glomerulopathies, malignant hypertension, coagulation defects, bilateral acute nephritis, and renal artery vein occlusions. You can see this is internal causes. This is internal renal, this is intrarenal causes. Pathophysiology. This is usually resulting from acute tubular necrosis caused by ischemia that comes often after surgery. Post renal acute renal failure causes obstruction illopathies, urethral destruction, the edema, tumor, stones, and clots, and larger the prostate. Generally, cause of obstruction include kidney stone or urethral stones, prostatic hypertrophy, bladder tumor, neurogenic bladder, catheters, easily reversible, so exclude early. Pathophysiology Usually occurs with urinary tract obstruction that affect the kidneys bilaterally. There is a pattern of several hours with anuria, frank pain, followed by polyuria, being a characteristic findings. The clinical manifestations will have origuria, diuresis, and uh, uh, okay. Uh, the clinical manifestations of the progression of acute renal uh, failure with recovery of renal function occurs in three phases. We can have a phase of regulia when the patient is severely ill, but when we, have, we try to collect it, the diuresis will, will return normal, and then after the recovery. Explanations. Origulia, there is a reduction in the urine output inferior to 30 ml per hour or inferior to 400 ml per day. I have said that how do we calculate this, the, the quantity of urine for normal adult person? We calculate by using 0 0.5 ml times personal cage per hour. If we, per day, Another T can go can't go under four hundred meals. It begins within one day and the last one to three weeks. Urea and the in the plasma level increase. When we say diuresis, as the function improves, increase in the urine volume is progressive. Recovery. Return to normal serial measurement of plasma creatinine. That may take from 3 to 12 months. Approximately 30% of individuals do not have full recovery of a normal glomerular filtration rate. Glomerular filtration rate or tubular function. Chronic renal failure. The chronic renal failure is a progressive and irreversible deterioration in renal function in which the body's ability to maintain metabolic and fluid electrolyte balance fails. 
resulting in uremia and azotemia detention of urea and the other nitrogenous waste in the blood in these cases the client does not eliminate the urine and the, the blood are not filtrated and the waste remain in the, in the body the blood volume increases the causes can be diabetes this is the reading cause hypertension chronic glomerulonephritis chronic pyronephritis obstruction of urinary tract hereditary lesions vascular disorders infections medications and toxic agents those can be the cause of chronic renal failure the factors involved in the pathophysiology of renal failure are creatinine and urea clearance is elevated in plasma creatinine and urea sodium and the water balance sodium and the water retention phosphate and the calcium balance the calcium decreased but phosphate increased hematocrit this is the concentration of the red blood cells in the total volume of the blood decreased due to reduced production of erythropoietin by the kidneys potassium balance retained potassium acid base balance acidosis develops the factors involved in the pathophysiology of renal failure are creatinine and urea clearances. They are the increased plasma creatinine and urea. Sodium and the water balance. Sodium and the water are retained. Phosphate and calcium balance. There is a reduction in calcium ions and increase in phosphate. Hematoclite. They decrease the volume of the blood cells due to reduce the production of erythropoietin by the kidneys. Potassium balance. The potassium is retained as the base balance as those is develops. Okay, those are the, the factors involved in pathology of renal failure. Clinical manifestations. The clinical manifestations of chronic renal failure are often described using the term uremia. This is increase of urea in the blood. There is accumulation of toxins in the plasma due to the clean in the renal function. It is understandable. Generally, the signs and symptoms include hypertension, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, weight loss, pre-retard. Other treatments in treating the chronic renal failure, a dietary control including a protein restriction and potassium restriction, adequate caloric intake. For those patients, they don't take the, the, the high calories, the high proteins. They are restricted for potassium restrictions. Uh, they, they cannot take the banana. They cannot take the banana and matox. Um, the sodium and the fluid evaluation, uh, the sodium restriction and the fluid restricted to an amount equal to the daily urine output plus uh, 500 ml per day. It means what? For the client who has the chronic renal failure, he has to take the water equal to what? Equal to the uh, amount of uh, uh, equal to daily urine output. Uh, they, they take the urine output and they uh, pass the 500 ml of water now and drink only those. And because they have a problem of uh, filtrations, now the fluid accumulates in the body. For any stage renal failure is treated by dialysis, supportive therapy, and renal transplantation. We have two kinds of dialysis. You have, uh, they have the uh, peritoneal dialysis and the uh, hemodialysis. For peritoneal dialysis, now it is not developed here. Uh, this is a, a concentrated concentration solutions that uh, they put into the the abdomen and the help the client to filtrate the fluids. Now, uh, we will see in the Sashika, King Faisal Hospital, Kanombe, and the Sashibe, Butare, they do the dialysis. Now, I don't know if you you have never observed it, you observe, you will observe it. And the, what we call hemodialysis, this is a, a kind of external kidney. It is the external kidney. They take the patient and the, 
and they connect it to the machine and the machine filtrate the blood while the blood returning to the client maybe it is very expensive this is very expensive in rwanda but they performed thank you very much for your attention for this uh, you know. thank you very much merci beaucoup murakoze cyane mukomeze mutere inkunga icano ukanda kuri subscribe ndetse no kunzogera kugira ngo ibindi bikurikira mujye mita uyibona uwo mwanya igiye tubishyizeho